Blue Origin has been working for years to prove that its massive new Glenn rocket can compete with the best in the space industry. The company has been under pressure ever since its first orbital launch earlier this year failed to bring the booster back safely. That failure was a big blow since New Glenn is designed to be reusable from the start. Now, all eyes are on the rocket's second flight. The company had originally planned to carry it out in August. The CEO even confirmed back in June that the second mission would happen on the 15th of that month, after the team successfully ran a hot fire test of the rocket's second stage engine in April. It was pitched as a major step forward, one that could finally demonstrate Blue Origin's ability to recover the rocket. But as weeks went by, doubts began to spread. Reports suggested the timeline was too ambitious, with insiders hinting that the August date may have been chosen to keep Jeff Bezos satisfied rather than reflect actual readiness. Blue Origin has also struggled to keep up with its public goal of flying eight times in 2024, something that already seemed out of reach. Making matters more complicated, the senior vice president in charge of New Glenn, Jared Jones, left the company right after news of the slow progress surfaced. His sudden departure raised questions about the program's pace and Bezos's level of patience with the project. Sure enough, by mid-August, the expected launch hadn't happened. Instead, Blue Origin announced a new target, September 29th. The mission was revealed to be carrying NASA's escapade probes to Mars. This immediately confirmed that the rocket's debut had been delayed, since escapade wasn't ready on the original schedule. It also showed that Blue Origin's very first flight would be tied to a high-profile NASA science mission. This brings us to the real challenge ahead. Can Blue Origin actually stick to September 29th, or will the launch slip again? With a little over a month to go, the company still has a long list of steps to complete. They've made some progress. Over the summer, Blue Origin successfully carried out key module activation tests. These involve the rocket's hydrogen peroxide-powered systems, one controlling the reaction control thrusters, and the other handling the hydraulics of the aft section. Those tests helped prove the rocket can manage complex operations during flight. But the hardest work is still ahead. The next big milestone is installing the seven BE-4 engines on the first stage. Each of these engines generates around 550,000 pounds of thrust at liftoff. Getting all seven fitted and ready is a complicated process. After that comes the static fire test, where the engines are fired on the pad while the rocket is held down. Then the full vehicle needs to be assembled, with the first and second stages stacked together before rollout to the launch pad at Complex 36 in Florida. Once it's on the pad, the team must conduct a wet dress rehearsal. That means fully fueling the rocket without ignition, testing it as if it were launch day. Only then will NASA's escapade payload be attached. After final checks, the last step is securing the FAA launch license. That is a tight schedule with just weeks left on the clock. The contrast between Blue Origin's pace and other companies is striking. New Glenn's development began in 2015, yet its first launch only happened in January 2025, after years of delays and engine problems. That's a decade of work far longer than SpaceX's Falcon 9, which went from design to first flight in just over four years, and even longer than ULA's Vulcan, which uses the same BE-4 engines but has already flown three times. But Blue Origin's slower pace is partly by design. The company follows its motto, Gratitim Ferociter, which means step by step, ferociously. It chooses careful testing and safety over rapid trial and error. In fairness, developing a reusable orbital rocket is one of the hardest engineering challenges there is. The BE-4 engines themselves faced years of trouble, including combustion instability that slowed their path to qualification. On top of that, Blue Origin jumped directly from its small suborbital New Shepard vehicle to New Glenn, a giant orbital class booster. Building in reusability from day one meant adding landing legs, grid fins, and other systems right into the first design. This is much harder than building a basic expendable rocket first. Even with the delays, Blue Origin isn't alone in moving slowly. Boeing's Starliner capsule has seen even longer delays and setbacks. ULA's Vulcan took years to get off the ground. In that light, 
New Glenn's progress looks more like an industry-wide pattern than an exception. The real test is whether Blue Origin can now deliver on its promises. That's why this upcoming mission carries more weight than just another launch date on the calendar. If Blue Origin manages to launch on September 29th, it won't just be about getting escapade to Mars. The company is also under pressure to show that it can land and recover New Glenn's first stage, something it failed to do on its debut flight. That milestone is critical for proving the rocket's long-term value. A successful booster landing would finally demonstrate reusability, making New Glenn competitive with SpaceX's Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. Beyond Mars, Blue Origin also has its eyes on the moon. Next summer, it plans to send its first Blue Moon lander, called Mark 1, on a demonstration mission. This lander, just 8 meters tall, is designed to deliver about 3 metric tons of cargo to the lunar surface. The Pathfinder mission, designated MK-1-SN01, will test the BE-7 engine, cryogenic systems, avionics, communications, and its ability to land within about 100 meters of a target. It will also carry a NASA science package to the lunar South Pole. A key study will look at how the lander's engine exhaust interacts with the dusty lunar surface, which is vital knowledge for future human landings. Compared to SpaceX's Starship HLS, Blue Origin's Mark I is far simpler. Starship requires multiple launches, in-orbit refueling, and the largest rocket ever built. Blue Origin's approach uses a single launch with everything on board from the start. That makes the mission profile more straightforward, reducing risk. While Starship will eventually need to prove it can handle massive operations, Blue Origin's smaller lander might quietly score an early success. Blue Origin has also been building experience in lunar technology through its acquisition of Honeybee Robotics. That team developed systems like PlanetVac, a soil collection device, and Lister, a drill for measuring heat beneath the lunar surface. These tools show that Blue Origin is preparing for more than just launches, but the company's progress still depends on proving New Glenn. That's why September 29th remains the turning point. If the flight works, Blue Origin gains momentum. If it fails or slips again, questions about delays and Bezos's commitment will only intensify. Meanwhile, SpaceX is continuing to push forward with upgrades and tests on its Starship program. Ship 37 recently completed an extensive ground testing campaign, including checks of its redesigned hot stage ring and reinforced grid fins. These modifications are intended to improve booster stability during ascent and reduce stress during stage separation, increasing the chances of a safe and reliable recovery. With these tests finished, the vehicle is now cleared for integration ahead of the next flight series, marking a critical step toward future orbital launches. In parallel, SpaceX has been focused on its Mechazilla launch tower, the massive structure designed to catch the super-heavy booster during descent. Engineers are refining the chopstick arms and testing updated software controls to ensure precise timing and positioning. The company aims to attempt a full booster catch before the end of the year, although the success of this effort depends heavily on the results of upcoming Starship test flights. Each flight will provide valuable data to optimize both hardware and software for future recoveries. This ongoing work highlights the contrast in operational approaches between SpaceX and Blue Origin. SpaceX relies on rapid, iterative testing and multiple prototypes to quickly learn and adapt. Each test flight informs immediate design improvements, from engines to landing systems. Blue Origin, by contrast, must achieve its first New Glenn launch and booster recovery largely on schedule, following a much more deliberate and cautious approach. The difference in strategies underscores the significance of Blue Origin's September 29th target. While SpaceX can test, fail, and improve quickly, Blue Origin faces intense pressure to succeed on its very first orbital mission with the new Glenn. The outcome of this flight will not only determine the company's immediate momentum, but also how it is perceived in comparison to SpaceX's fast-paced development and reusability achievements.